We now revert to the formal part of the program. And the next speaker up is Rob Pickering. Please welcome Rob. Fantastic, thanks. Okay, so I'm Rob Pickering. I'm CEO at IP Cortex. We're an app development company uh, based in the UK. A little bit unusually, actually, for app developers here, um, most of our customers sit off at the edge of the carrier network. So um, most of the customers of our applications would tend to regard a carrier as someone that you send minutes to down um, a SIP trunk or, um, you know, even in some bizarre cases, a TDM trunk. And um, we've been developing with this thing called WebRTC for a little while because it fits into our um, rationale of delivering applications to our end customers that use entirely open interfaces. So we're very much an open interface company. Um, and we um, like to use internet technologies to, uh, to deliver service to customers rather than the kind of binary applications. Um, I've entitled the, uh, the, the, this kind of segment, um, what will our, our WebRTC do to the dial tone? But I think what I actually mean is what will WebRTC do to um, carrier minutes, really? So I'm talking about stuff that's, that gets mediated by carriers. I, I can't remember actually hearing a dial tone. Actually, the last time I heard a dial tone was in the hotel room last night, and that's probably <laughs> the last time I've heard a dial tone in you know, some considerable period of time. So in, in the kind of like the world view of WebRTC, there are, there, are, there are two kind of opposing points of view. There's this kind of view um, that WebRTC is kind of this smart thing that, that's kind of inextricably linked in some way to, to carrier audio, and it's going to find some ways of embracing and extending dial tone. So there are lots of folks um, for whom WebRTC interoperating with these kind of devices that do three kilohertz audio is really, really important. Um, and it's seen as sort of a way to displace things like web-based soft or to displace soft phones, deliver web-based soft phones, and that's, you know, kind of okay, but it's not delivering anything you can't do already. Um, it starts to get more interesting when you start thinking about virtual call centers, so, you know, you can turn your call center into a bunch of Chromebooks um, when you're bringing the audio directly into the web browser that way, but, you know, really, it's still a little bit obvious, and there's no actual sort of step capability change. Um, we sort of think it gets more interesting when you start kind of dovetailing sort of smart stuff here. So we did, the uh, reason I guess I'm here, is we did this thing at TADHack called RTC Emergency. Um, I'm not going to eat into my seven minutes by talking too much about that, but what we federally did was layer this WebRTC piece to give us real-time video and location information on top of what was otherwise a perfectly normal um, audio voice call. Uh, go have a look on the, uh, on the TADHack website if you want to see the, the, the whole video of what happened there. Um, there is an entirely different point of view um, about WebRTC that comes from kind of the internet side of the house, which is, you know, ignore phone calls. Um, pretty irrelevant. Um, everything's going to be peer-to-peer -peer and completely over the top. So that tends to start um, feeding services like the Amazon Mayday service, a little button you hit on your phone, um, gives you direct customer call center access without actually touching anything that's identifiable as a, uh, as a voice network. Um, and, you know, I think like, you know, a tenth of a percent of all the possible applications that could be written um, with WebRTC type services, once you start, start taking into account the RTC stands for real-time communication, have ever been written. And there are, you know, there are a million ideas out there and they, they, a lot of them aren't going to touch carrier networks, I don't think, for voice. Um, and pretty much, you know, one example of that, Internet of Things and pretty much the whole of the sort of video conference and collaboration at network. So I want to share a bit of our own experience developing a WebRTC application that interacts both with traditional voice networks, because that's where our bread and butter is right now, um, and um, delivers a whole lot of peer-to-peer -peer communication. So we developed this thing called Open Communication Manager quite a while ago, um, and it's the window on our voice systems that allows our customers to control their voice systems. Um, I apologize for the sort of slightly shonky um, video operation here. I said to Mark I'll do a, uh, a video just in case the Wi-Fi is rubbish. Um, and um, yeah, I need to use it, thankfully. Um, so here's, uh, here's what our application does. Beth logs into her open communication manager. Um, she gets a screen like this, so she's got all of her um, audio calls down this side. And of course, we've got WebRTC in here, so we can deliver an audio call. So here's someone calling from outside. Beth can choose to take that call. Um, she's taking the call directly into the console here and got audio on a headset or whatever. Great. Um, she can also call a colleague, so if she wants to make an ordinary audio call to Fred, um, off she goes. She makes a call to Fred. 
Fred can pick the call up. And call drops off again. So, you know, here's, um, here's another example of a call coming in to, uh, to Beth. Call comes in from outside. Um, Beth picks up the call. She decides that she wants to, um, to drop it over onto, uh, onto Fred's line, so she does a transfer. Fred picks that call up. He can choose to pick the call up on his, uh, on his WebRTC session over here, and he's talking to the caller. So in the middle of talking to the caller, he decides that he needs to start a chat session with Beth. So he starts the chat session over to Beth because um, he wants some info from Beth that, that she has. Um, a bit contrived, but all I've got is Beth. Um, so he starts a chat session up with Beth. Beth sees an inbound, uh, inbound chat here from Fred. She can respond to that. And Beth decides that um, Fred really needs to see video from Beth. Don't get me on to whether video is a really good thing or not, or whether people want point-to-point uh, -point video. Um, so here's, uh, here's Beth. Um, and um, she's talking to Fred. Beth decides to send the file to, uh, to Fred. So she sends the file by a drag and drop there. Um, Fred picks up the file, grabs it. He's got the file that he wants in order to send to his customer. He can click download that, pull the file up, interactively chat into Fred. Of course, he's got all his, his carrier audio still going on here. Interestingly, because um, his contact is on an ordinary audio call, he's probably going to have to email this thing now um, to the contact at the far end. So that's a 30,000 foot view of one app that tries to kind of meld WebRTC um, and carry audio, carry audio into one place. Um, what we actually found, because we're now running this as our internal phone system, what we actually found is that, of course, where this is available, people are going to try and use um, the richer communications on the right rather than, you know, just kind of call each other and get restricted to a, uh, a three kilohertz audio call. And, you know, I guess that's really the punchline here, um, that the key when you're building applications in the environment is about being innovative and embedding intuitive flows that users want to use rather than coming at this from a telecoms core control point of view or coming at it from a web point of view. It's really got to be a user orientated view um, to build intuitive apps. And that's, um, that's what I have for you today. Any questions on it? How, about, how much time have I got? Have I got um, a minute? You got, you got, you got, I got, you know, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. No, no, you've done well, you've done well. Any questions for Rob? One of the things that I've loved about today's session is how we've seen innovation and new ways of doing things, both at the infrastructure layer, the switching layer, and also at the user experience layer. We were talking earlier about how we think that all this WebRTC stuff is great, but you've really got to be able to provide a way to make it a better experience for end users. And I think we've absolutely seen that in the presentations today. Please join me in thanking Rob. <laughs>